What are these hairs? I'm so annoyed by these hairs. Ugh, you guys, welcome back to Perfume Vegas. I'm Holly Galele. Today's video is my five most favorite fragrance discoveries of 2020. So I had a lot of favorite discoveries, but these are all ones that either like full bottle worthy or replace when I run out worthy or like I can't get enough of them worthy. They're just my favorites. And when I say discoveries, these are fragrances that I didn't sample. They were all blind buys. Uh, some of them more recommendations, but there was absolutely no prior knowledge about the fragrance on my part before I purchased it. So if you want to see my picks, just keep watching. All right, you guys, I'm so happy that you're here. Welcome back. My hands are really dry. I kind of want to put some lotion on, but I don't have any in front of me. So we'll just get on with it. I'm going to go in the order of which I tried these perfumes throughout the year, throughout 2020. So the earliest discovery to the most recent discovery. And that <laughs> the earliest fragrance discovery that I have is... Police to be exotic jungle woman. I picked this up way back in February or March. I'll put the haul video here that I did. And this fragrance, I'm sure it's like a dupe or clone for something, but it's so beautiful. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It's floral, but not too floral. It's really great all around fragrance. It has a nice plummy top note and then a lot of floral and wood in the base. So it's very grounded. It's slight, it's slightly warm, but it's not heavy or like sickly sweet. I originally purchased this because the notes intrigued me. The brand was heck, Hecka. The brand was super inexpensive and it came in a really weird little skull bottle, but the scent is worth staying around for. It's really good. I've tried quite a few others from police. Um, I have those in videos too. And although I think that the brand as a whole does a really good job with their fragrances, this particular scent is <clears throat> The best in my opinion of what I've tried and so that's why it is here in my top five of 2020 <clears throat> the next fragrance that came in was one that I ordered it was a birthday present my birthday was in April so this was slightly after that police fragrance and this was one of my first like uber niche brand scents. So I, again, um, I blind bought this. I did watch a bunch of reviews to make sure that I wasn't getting into something that I wasn't going to like. Um, but at the end of the day, I did not know how this was going to smell when I ordered it. And that is Zoologist Squid. So I picked this up for my birthday. I ordered from Lucky Scent because we had just gone into lockdown and like things weren't shipping from Canada very quickly um, or at all. I was seeing a lot of people complain about shipments being canceled or delayed indefinitely. Um, so I ordered mine from Lucky Scent and I was very happy with the purchase. I was very happy with um, the whole process. Um, and then the fragrance itself, I just, I love, I know it looks like I've not used much of it and I haven't to be honest because I got it in April. This is a pretty heavy, spicy marine fragrance. It's definitely like a deep marine amber fragrance. Um, not something light and citrusy and easy to wear, but, oh. It comes right off the top. It's that briny, beautiful briny top note that says 
Like this is a this is an ocean fragrance, not just like a cool water citrus um, Dolce & Gabbana light blue fragrance. This is like marine. But that briny, seaweedy, kelpy note quickly fades away. And it's like you are sinking into the ocean. Like you go from the top where it's very salty and things are floating, flotsam and jetsam, and you're sinking into the depth of the ocean where these squid live. And then you get that rich, inky note at the bottom with the ambergris. It's so, so good. I really enjoy this fragrance. It smells great on the skin as well. Um, I have pulled it out to wear. This is a great fragrance for, um, I think, for if you like a spicy kind of um, ambergris type of scent for the holidays, this is a great choice because it does have that rich, elegant, decadent feeling. Oh, so, so pretty. I love it. I love it. All right. So the next one. The next one I also purchased on recommendation of several YouTubers and I decided to give this a go because I wanted a white floral scent that I was like, I felt like I was missing. There was like a hole in my collection. I have a pin up like right above this ring light and I keep thinking it's a spider and it's freaking me out. It's not, it's a pin, but anyway, so I had recently, I had sampled Amouage Love Tuberose and I just, I really liked it, but I couldn't you know, at the time that wasn't something that I could put into my collection financially, I couldn't afford it, but I really wanted some sort of white floral fragrance to fill this need that I had. And a lot of people were recommending this fragrance. It is the Nux Prodigious Le Parfum. I still have the little sample size going because I put it away for a while. Actually, it's still put away. Um, but yeah, this is beautiful. I didn't know what it was going to smell like because the description that people give mostly is like, oh, it just smells like tropical beach, like uh, French Riviera scent yacht. <laughs> so I didn't know what to expect. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I knew white flowers, beachy, and then it has the note of pebbles in it. Like, come on, come on. Your fantasy notes start getting a little weird when you can't really figure out what they're supposed to smell like. Like pebbles, I know what they look like, but so you're saying dirt, rocks, what, 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 you know? But this is just, for how inexpensive this fragrance is, you can buy the full size for about $65 to $80, depending on where you get it from. For how inexpensive this fragrance is, it smells like it should cost three times the price. I mean, it is just a beautiful, beautiful white floral tropical coconutty beachy fragrance much better than scents like um beach walk by martin marcella or bobby brown beach i hate that fragrance um or any of these like suntanny lotiony suntan lotion scents um this smells like class those smell like uh, Jersey Shore, you know, it's like a elevated level. So Nukes Le, Pro <laughs> Nukes Prodigious Le Parfum. This is probably my most favorite discovery of 2020. If I had to pick the top, top one, this is probably it. If people, if I hadn't seen people, um, reviewing it and recommending it, Mila Leblanc, um, the Nostalgic, I think that's how she calls herself now. Um, I think maybe Yana from The Scented. I can't, it's it's hard to know for sure who I saw, but it's um, Gabriella Francesca. I've seen a lot of people recommend this fragrance and I'm so happy that they were out there saying that because it's, it's just so good. It's just so, so good. After that, I have one that's actually not a full bottle, but is one that I plan to get a full bottle of. It came in Scentbird, so maybe this is cheating a little bit on my own rules, but I actually, the brand, both the house and the fragrance were totally new to me when I tried this. 
So it is Regime de Fleur Glass Blooms. I had seen ads, like adverts on Instagram and Facebook for Regime de Fleur, and I kind of like brushed it off as like, oh, it's just an Instagram brand, you know, whatever. But this scent, Glass Blooms, which last time I checked was still available for purchase. However, I can't promise that's true at this day. Um, this is like, it, this is a real creation. Like somebody really put work into this. Um, I don't know the perfumer that did this. Um, I don't know if they have an in-house perfumer at Regime de Fleur or if they have people that make these for them, but somebody put work into this. It's supposed to smell like a garden party in the summer, basically, uh, like in a beautiful atrium. And it has a top note of Prosecco as well as a bunch of floral notes and then a slightly woody green base. And the Prosecco note is beautiful. It comes off so well. Um, and it doesn't ever like feel like alcoholic, like kind of a tipsy note. There's some perfumes that when they smell boozy, they smell kind of like booze, you know? <laughs> this doesn't. This smells bubbly and sweet and exciting. And then there's a beautiful florals and then there's grounding notes. <sighs> I really hope that when I'm able to purchase um, some full bottles of perfume, that Glass Blooms is still available because this is one I, I really want to get my hands on. This was probably, I know this is in my top favorites from Scentbird as well. This one, along with the other Regime de Fleur scent falls that I got, were both amazing. And there was another um, alcoholic boozy type of fragrance, Muscathinol by Ether, that was also so good. But I think that because this was a brand and a fragrance, this and Musk, like this and Musk Ethanol really tied for like probably being my favorite scent bird discovery. Oh, it's so pretty. And then the last one that I have for you that is also my most recent pickup. Um, this was specifically recommended by Clamal CC Fragrance um, in her channel. She talked about this fragrance and that's where I saw it and heard of it. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't expect to buy this brand ever again, but I did. And that is Creed Royal Oud. So... <sighs> Yeah, I have Love and Black from Creed and I like, like, I love the fragrance, but I have sniffed Creed fragrances at the boutique all over, you know, up and down the aisle. And I just, I'm, I never thought that this was a house, that this was a fragrance house that had anything that was really on offer for me that I really wanted or was interested in. But then this was on this particular fragrance was on sale hugely bigly on sale at max aroma and i went ahead and picked it up because i was curious and i figured if it was not great i could resell it but it turns out that clemence has really good taste and it is great so this is a sandalwood scent actually this is quite a sandalwood heavy fragrance it's so beautiful. It's lightly masculine, but it's true. It's pretty unisex. You don't have to feel like you were going to be wearing your boyfriend's perfume if you wear this. There is a slight brush of oud. Like, oud comes in at the kind of the top and mid and just sort of like tickles your nose and tickles, you know, across your skin. And then it dries down into this very rich, creamy sandalwood. Ugh. Oh my God. Ugh. Let me in this. We're just going to have a moment. Hold on. So. Royal Oud. Royal Oud. Um, if you want an Oud, like Oud heavy fragrance, you're not going to find that here. I'm looking. I'm not looking at you. I'm sorry. If you are wanting an Oud heavy fragrance, you're not going to find that here. That's just... I don't know why it's called that, to be honest. There's not, there is a light hint of oud. Like I said, it kind of caresses you around the middle of the fragrance. Um, but the it's so rich, creamy, woody, sandalwood. It's so beautiful. It's, <laughs> it's beautiful. So anyway, that was the 
last choice for for fragrances that I discovered in 2020, my favorites. If you want to hear them in, you know, ranking order, I would tell you Nukes, Creed, Zoologist, Police, uh, Regime de Fleur. It's easy. I mean, it's not like it's that much thought. So <laughs> I just didn't want anyone to think they were like maybe not seeing my favorites. <laughs> These are my favorites. So anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I'm not sure when it's going up, um, but if I don't have another video that goes up before the new year, um, go check out my weekly vlogs for December. I'm doing Vlogmas, but I'm doing weekly vlogs because nobody got time for that daily stuff. Um, so I'd love for you to join me on those. And otherwise, really, really sending you out warmest wishes for the holidays and a blessed new year. Thank you so much, you guys. Bye.